Hi, everybody. Welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Miriam. I'm Corey Baumeister. And we got Rob spitting lies from the booth. Say hi, Rob. <laughs> hi, Rob. <laughs> you were supposed to say bye, Rob, because you're spitting lies. Oh, that's that's that was that was a little too quick for me. That's all. Yeah, it's a little over his pay grade at this point. Yeah, okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, he'll be taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure you tag at Star City Games so you can see them. Send his favorites over to us. Yeah. As always, we are brought to you by Star City Games as well as Carnox Chairs. If you want one of these chairs, you can get ten percent off by using our affiliate link, which is carnoxcom SCG. Easy one to remember. Super easy. easy it only took me like 15 shows to get it right. So, yeah, it's super easy. <laughs> it's way easier when it's written out there for them. Yes. You know? We have a standard <clears throat> Mythic Championship this weekend, so we are playing Pioneer because standard sucks. Hey, I have to go play this format, okay? I don't. Good luck. <laughs> Let's play a good format. Absolutely. Pioneer is awesome. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We are playing two decks that are very much of our own creation, and by that <laughs> I mean not of our own creation. <laughs> Corey's going to be playing Caleb Durward's four-color mid-range deck. Yes. We got a little acceleration <laughs> and mana fixing from Sylvan Carry added, and just really powerful threats. Siege Rhino, Glorybringer, Questing Just wild beast. cards, you know, just, just every single spectrum. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have Siege Rhino and Chandra Torch of Defiance in your deck, you know you did something right. Yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> the big one for me, I think, is Glorybringer. This is a card that I suspected was very good a while ago, uh, and I've heard because you know it's really good at pressuring planeswalkers. Yes, uh, you know not only does it you know is a big flying haste body, but it also clears out a blocker if your ground creatures to get through. So even a high loyalty planeswalker like I don't know, Oko Thief of Crowns, yeah, maybe if people yeah. are playing that one, uh, you can take out w with a well timed glory bringer. So. Uh, big fan of that one in the deck. I've heard really yeah. good things about that card in general from a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I was even like uh, testing. I was testing your beautiful uh, blue, red, and soul artifact uh, deck yesterday, and I played against Harlan, and he was playing a green, red uh, beatdown deck with four glory. It had to have been four, four glory bringer. It was really based around that kind of final punch and like. Wow, I, I mean, it, it looked good. I think Glorybringer is a card that, kind of like in Standard, how it started off, people were like playing two of, they're like, ah, it costs five, I don't know if I really want to commit that much, and then by the end of the season, people were playing five, six of them, you know? Yeah. People were maxing out, they were playing four in Teamer Energy and stuff like that, and it, it basically single-handedly like pushed out uh, Green Black, uh, Winding Constrictor deck, like just one of my favorite decks, just completely shoved it to the end because of Glorybringer, and honestly, I suspect it to do the same in Pioneer, just like, Start off as a low numbered card and just end as a four of in any really red deck. I I, I think it's very underrated right yeah. now. In the new world outside of Sahili and Ramp, yes. you know, yeah. And speaking of red decks, that's what I'll be playing. This is Canister's list from the top eight of the challenge. I noted on Tuesday's show that we're seeing people finally really constrict their curves yeah. and play all the good ones and twos and not really mess around with the threes and fours. And that's what this list does. It's mainly ones and twos. We have one Hazaret. So a really good looking red list, uh, you know, basically a refined red deck. Wait a minute, let me stop here. Canister, the creator of Hogak, you know, the creator of Paradoxal Outcome, just comboing off with one mana red creatures? If they're good, they're good. This deck's got to be good. I'm terrified if Canister is uh, picking up a mono red deck. Although the top eight was from the pre band meta game, so there's okay. eight, there's eight shocks in the deck. So I, I suspect that was partially motivated by trying to kill mana creatures and have one mana answers to the Sahili combo. Yeah. So maybe we want to cut down on some of the shocks. We'll see how good they are. At Glory Bringers, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at Glory Bringers. <laughs> uh, so we'll we'll see how we want to adjust it moving forward. But I think yeah. the key to building these red decks is really low curve. Low land count. There's only 19. We still got four Ramonap runes and a Castle Embreath. Yeah. So a good number of utility lands for even a low land count. So. God, that's some expert analysis. Mono Red wanted to play uh, some uh, low converted mana cost stuff. You're really rewriting well, the book here. I mean, people are trying to, we're initially <laughs> trying to put a lot of Chain Whirlers, Rampaging for Ossadons, Hazrets in their yep. main decks. Now yep. we're seeing more of the big cards on the sideboard again. You know, I got some extra. Yep. Got some chain rollers here. We got a Bedlam Reveler. That's a neat one. Yeah. No, and honestly, I think that's the way to, to build it. Like most most matches when you play against mono red tend to slow down uh post board games just because a lot of decks bring in removal to deal with cheap yeah, creatures. Life gain and all that stuff. Exactly. And then they're just 
at, from the red side, you're just like, oh, you're bringing in life gain. Cool. Hezrit's still going to kill you eventually, yeah. you know, and, and just going over the top of that. It's a very popular uh, play pattern that red has had, you know, for years. It's just low to the ground game one, get under people's strategies, and then readjust and kind of go big um, post-board games. So, so that's what I like we're going to do. And then yeah. I'm going to be on the play because yeah. I so generously bequeathed you the marbles on Tuesday show. Uh, oh, yeah. You, you, you punted pretty bad, I have to say. That, uh, twice. Twice, yeah. I played that green black uh, deck after the fact, and it is also insane. Like I, I'm very torn between which deck I like more, the green black scales or your blue red and soul artifact deck. It, it's close, but yeah. I'll, I'll figure it out over the weekend. Yeah, sure. I'll let you know. Uh, I'll figure it out at uh, at the Mythic Championship. Yeah, just after the, the day's done, you've played eight rounds. Like, okay, time to test Pioneer. Time to <laughs> pop open a league. <laughs> yeah. You're just dual queue in the Pro Tour. <laughs> you got Seems your laptop right. in your lap. You're just like, ooh, uh, oh, <laughs> which God. card should I pick? <laughs> yeah. Hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm comboing off right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, hold your hand. Um, it's reasonable we got lands and spells. Okay. Um, no, I think this hand is actually quite strong. Um, on the draw, it, I mean, it looks wild, but we're going to keep. Okay. I will play a Bowman Courier. Bowman. Get in for one. 19. You're up. All right. So that was a pretty good draw. I will go Marsh and pass to you. Hmm. Hmm. Angry, shallow, and pedantic. Yes, quite shallow, quite pedantic. Attack trigger. Okay. 18. Eidolon. Eidolon. I may respond to this. This one's interesting because I, you know, I have a push here. I'm going to push something. But if we look at my hand, like, I mean, sure, I have um, some instances where this Eidolon is going to hurt me. But it honestly might hurt you more. Um... And Bowmat is usually a very scary threat. I'm just going to respond by hitting okay. Bowmat. I suspected there was a fatal push there, so I yeah. sequenced this turn as best I could around it. Yeah, and honestly, realistically, you almost always save your removal spell in situations like that in case they do play Eidolon. But if I was planning on shooting the Bowmat anyways, I just shouldn't have taken a damage there. But you know what? I, I'm trying to learn from Ross Merriam and try to get a punt in at least once a day. <laughs> <laughs> punt today keeps the doctor away. That's, take no, the damage, please. It keeps, uh, keeps wins away. You're at 16. 16. Your turn. Okay. I will play an Ash Zealot and go to 18 for my Eidolon. And that one is the Haste. Whenever creature casts a card from their graveyard. I probably won't yeah. do that too often. Attack. All right. We'll block. You take two, go to 14. 14 and you're at 18, you said, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take three, one from this and two from my Eidolon. Go to 15 and I'll skewer you. Skewered. Okay. I'm at 11. You can go. All right. So... It's an interesting card. I think we are just going to take two, but gain three. So gain one. I'm going to go to 12, and you're going to go to 12. I'll pass to you. What you know about Siege Rhino? You a fan? Fatal push, slow and carry added Siege Rhino is a strong curve against the red. <laughs> it really is. You know, we were talking that, we were talking, you know, basically since Pioneer has been around, that Siege Rhino, like, isn't really getting its glory because there's not a bunch of hyper red decks. But, you know, I mean, if, if decks like this do pop up, our trusty old uh, transportation Rhino here is quite strong. I will... I, I'm going to block here. I don't want first strike to just lightning strike and combo and get nothing. Okay, you take two, go to ten? Yep. Uh, pass the turn. All right. I think I just want to get aggressive here. Three cards. I'm not super concerned about too much. Um, we're going to get in there. Um, I will go to eight. You'll go to eight. Okay. Now, if we look at our hand, um, we got options here. I mean, I think it's just got to be this. This just seems like insane. I'm a little worried of a uh, one particular card, but the best follow up to a siege rhino is usually a siege rhino. <laughs> All right. So you got a five. I got a thirteen, and a, a garden of the ten. Look at this mana base. Love that. Pass to you. Is this a good curve? One, two, three, four. On your end step, I'm yep. going to shock you. Oh, yeah. You go to 11. I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, that is awkward. <laughs> 
So very awkward. All right, so yeah, at 11, I feel pretty solid here. You can go. All right. Now we're going to go with the Tom Brady of Magic cards. Play the best QB. Boom. <laughs> Kept wanting three damage spells to take Siege Rhino out in combat with Ashella and just drawing sorcery speed ones. Yeah, it was, yeah. It well, great. you could have killed this one with uh, the turn with Eidolon, right? Because mm. Eidolon dealt it two damage. Could have killed uh, the first one. Well, I, I drew the screw this turn. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah never mind. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Eidolon not great in this matchup. I wonder if I was supposed yeah. to ash sell it on turn two and get you to push that so then I could like throw burn spells at your face and then Bomet Courier. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Eidolon is we'll, definitely, we'll I, I do agree. Points in, you know? Eidolon definitely should be a card you should side out, I think, because yeah. this deck like goes two to four. Like that's yeah. what it wants yeah. to do. No, yeah. Eidolon is the worst card in my deck. Yeah, but, but I, I, I think no matter what you did there, um, I mean, I mean, you would have lost yeah, regardless. Double Rhino's gonna be but um, to play to play cleanly, I still think you play Eidolon because what if I just have you know more removal spells exactly. or whatever? You that know, so a... I, I think you still did it right, especially with me having a swamp open. You'd much rather me kill a Bowman or Eidolon than your Ash sell it, I think, because you either a want Eidolon off the battlefield because it's a liability to you, or um, or you wouldn't rather. Lose the Ash Sea lot and let me untap and play a two drop, and all you have is a bow mat, you know? Yeah. So I think it was right. Just didn't work out. All right, well, let's uh, let's do two pre board games, and then we'll do one post board. But you got a question for us, Rob, what we're going? I do. Yeah. Um, somebody in chat was. And wondering. not a lie, please. We, we saw your tweets. So. <laughs> somebody was wondering, what do you think about Paradise Druid in the four color deck over Sylvan Carry? Is the blocking more well, of an issue? Um, I, I mean, I think. I mean, they're both hexproof, which is fine. Um, I don't know. Sylvan Carry added just has always been so insane. And yeah, I, I guess I don't have a, a great. It's been a staple too in standard. It's true. It's true. The, the question is whether you prefer a blocker or an attacker, right? Yeah. You know, the, the O3 is, really, is going to be better in these matchups. Yeah. The 2 1 is going to be a little bit better against like Planeswalker decks. Yeah, um, but I mean, you you bring in a chain whirler against my paradise druid, I'm gonna feel real sad. Yeah, I mean, yeah. don't I don't think chain whirler is well, that good against you, so I don't not sure I would bring it in even if you did have chain whirler. Really? Uh, like just a three three just to kill chain whirler? Maybe if you're on the play, if you can get me, you know that seems pretty nice. So. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe on the play specifically. Yeah, uh, but not on the draw. Uh, that's that sounds reasonable to me. So. To me, that that sounds like a meta game call. You know, I could see, I could definitely see meta games where I'd rather have the two one. Meta games where I'd rather have the O three. So, uh, and I think they're pretty comparable cards. And they are basically the same. So, yeah, it seems reasonable. Yeah, I don't know. All right, right. another solid two lander with a bunch of stuff. Hopefully, I don't get ran down by rhinos. Well, this hand is much worse, uh, but we are going to keep it. We got uh, we got some things, but it's. Uh, Definitely not as good of a hand as we had last time. I right. will right. well, once again start on a bow mat. A bow me. Start under it. 19. You can go. Go. Another turn one push. I just have a blooming marsh, Another man. You don't know my life. Push. You don't know my life. Okay. Supposed to be your bow mat. Ooh. Get in there. Well, they're getting in. Um, let's kill the big bow mat. <laughs> and you'll take two, go to 17. 17, yep. You're up. All right. Now, how many cards you got? Three. Three. Gonna thought seize me? Yeah, man. Yeah. Um. Go. Got another push. <laughs> another one. Another. Another one. Okay. Ass solid attack. Hey, you can call me DJ Khaled because I got another one. Take another two. <laughs> okay. Fifteen. You can go. Um. Dreadboard. You're a jerk. I know. Your turn. Soul Scar Mage. Shock you. Attack for two. All right. I'll take it. Yeah. Take four <laughs> total. Go to 11. Uh, four total to 11. Yep. Okay. Pass. All right. Siege Rhino. Go. Go. Just more removal. Maybe. Maybe. Attack for two. Uh, no blocks. Uh, 
Um, uh, yeah, I'll lightning strike you before damage. All right, I'll take seven. Go to four. Yep. You can go. I'll sack this. Thought there might be another removal spell there. Uh, and striking here after a removal spell gets Corey to six, which is enough to kill with two three damage spells. Yeah. And this lightning strike is not going to be holding it up. It's not going to be enough to kill a glory bringer if that's what happens next turn. Can't stop that from exerting and killing a creature. Yeah. Um. So now we have options here. This Final. just might be better um, than this, even though that was my plan. I mean, obviously, this would have been a great draw last turn. Um, still dead to a lot of things. I think we will go with a scavenging goose. That's pretty good. I will eat a bow map. Brings you to five. Yep. And Sago. That was a good draw. Rut row. That's probably bad for me. Attack you with both. Block. Four damage, lightning strike you. Lightning strike, yeah. And if this was not a mana confluence, I could have done something a little different. But yeah, I there was just no matter what I did, I couldn't beat Lightning Strike. Definitely couldn't beat a second one. I just had my opener was two Fatal Bushes, two Glory Bringers, <laughs> and uh, three lands. Yeah, and three lands. I think it's good enough, but you know, obviously, knowing the matchup, it might not work great for me. But if we drew Scavenging Ooze on turn four, so I had a play, I think I win that game because then I go Ooze, eat, uh, gain one life. Um, lightning strike the Ooze and get in. So you're still you're at four higher life at that point. Yeah, and then I just Glory Bringer, Glory Bringer. And maybe I escape your burn spells, but I think with you drawing that second three damage spell, I think you would have killed me ex like close to exactly or or if by a little. I actually bit. think you would have been at one. Yeah, nice. You would have been at exactly you. So I might have had to use mana confluence though. <laughs> oh, yeah, but if you use the confluence, I think you would have. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's gonna do it for our pre-boarded games. We're gonna come back with our game three. Dun dun dun. Right after a quick short break, and we'll uh, do some sideboarding here on Versus Live. See you there. All right, everybody, welcome back to Versus Live. We are doing some sideboarding here with Canister's Mono Red deck and Caleb Durwood's uh, four-color just trade binder deck, I think I'd like to call it. Just, you know what, I got all of these really cool rares and mythics. I'm putting them in a deck. Four-color flex. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, re I, I remember one of my first decks... It was around when Ravnica came out. I just combined all the duels, like 80 lands or whatever. You know, I was like, I just played a 90 card deck or whatever. I was a kid and I was like 14 and uh, just jammed it all together and then lost it at the card store. <laughs> I look back at how much that was worth and I'm like, ah, oh, good job. Good job, bud. Okay. So uh, we are going to take out Thought Seasons and Chandra's. Both are just really bad in this matchup. I don't want to shock myself ever. Um, you know, I'll just let you do the shocking. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And then Chandra is just a little show, a little slow. I think at best I like can negative three, kill a bow mat, and then it gains a life. It's four mana, destroy a creature, gain a life, you know? So it's uh, usually not where I want to be. And I'm just bringing in all five ways in the sideboard to kill creatures. Pretty easy swap on my side. I, I think Chandra would be better if you had more removal spells you could cast off the plus one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a braid, harness lightning, yeah, stuff like that. That's you don't. yeah. I mean that's that's honestly why Chandra was insane in like team or energy. Um, because you would tick up and you would either abraid their whatever or you would harness lightning their glory bringer or whatever yeah. back in the day. I, I remember just being on the play. We both played servants. The first time the play just went Chandra plus kill, harness lightning your servant. Yeah, you signed the slip. And yeah, the yeah that, was, that was game one. You still just sign the slip and the match is over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 100%. <laughs> okay. What do you got? A uh, lot more changes on my <laughs> side. We noted Eidolon is the worst card in the deck uh, while we were playing the pre-board games. So that that's the first card to cut. Searing Blood also just doesn't really have targets in the matchup. Uh, and then for all the cards I wanted, I ended up having a ninth card I wanted to bring out. And the shocks are not great. So we're going to trim there. Going to bring in some more robust threats. I like Abbott for generating some card advantage. Frosson and Skullcrack both stop. You know, Siege Rhino. Uh, Battle and Reveler generates some nice card advantage. And then Aether's for Harvester is not generally for mid-range matchups, but in this one in particular, like, you have Sweepers after board that it survives. Fatal Push is, it's hard to Fatal Push, but you really need a Fable Passage. Yeah. It, you know, can block a Siege Reiner or a Glory Bringer if you try to get aggressive against me. Yeah. If we get into that sort of battle, which will happen more often because I'm a little bit more robust. 
um, and and just gets in some damage in the air. Yeah, no, I think I think it seems great. You know, yeah. I mean, basically most of the cards I'm bringing in here do not really da- answer that very effectively. You know, I mean, I'm not going to languish it. Craglin Doom would be pretty decent against it, but yeah, should be good. Good sideboarding. Um, so I am going to be on the who won last game? I forgot. Mm, I did. You won. Last. Okay, so I'm going to be on the play. It, it just happened. It just happened. Yeah. I'm, Whatever. <laughs> you got some questions for us, Rob, while we get this I, going? I do. Free right. Ross in the mono red sideboard. Uh, what is the Abbot of Carrow Keep normally for? I think I can take this one. I, I mean, it's just sure. basically for any kind of slower matchup, right? Like any, any kind of matchup where being hyper aggressive doesn't matter. You know, I mean, it's just a good card advantage card in red, which red doesn't really get if you don't want to play like light up the stage and, or a ton of them, but we, yeah. we play four. So, Oh, you do play four. Okay. Well still, if you want to, if you want to add a fifth and sixth way for a card advantage, I think it's pretty decent. Yeah. And it yeah. still keeps your curve low. So you do get aggressive starts, uh, you know, which is still important. It's not like every post board game with a red deck, you're meant to play this grindy game. Yeah. Uh, you still want to be able to run people over an Abbot of Carol keep, you know, sort of, links those two plans together really nicely. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think it's either for those matchups or it's not good enough uh, to be in the sideboard. And I, I'm not I'm not 100% sure. I haven't played a lot of Mono Red and Pioneer, of course, but Canister's a smart dude. I'm sure he thought about, thought it out. So. Yeah. All right, we got another one while we're shuffling? Yeah, so if you're playing Mono Blue Devotion and you're kind of running into trouble with Is It Phoenix, what kind of cards would you put in your sideboard to deal with that matchup? That sounds like a Ross question. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so Mono Blue Devotion is the kind of deck that plays really heavily to the battlefield. You know, you're you're going uh, wide and big, really, trying to enable Thassa and Master Waves. You're very low on interaction. And that means that you're going to be particularly vulnerable to Thing in the Ice. So I can understand why you would struggle with Is It Phoenix. So the... The thing that you need is just answers to thing. Uh, you know, obviously blue doesn't have a lot of removal options, but I still like rapid hybridization. So that's the first card I would look to. Where's uh, dismember when you need it? Yeah, <laughs> you, you can play more brazen borrowers even in your main deck. Yep. Um, you know, they they you know can get it down to a counter and then you bounce it, and then suddenly they don't have time to redeploy and uh, uh, re-transform it, and then. Um, I don't know. I don't know what other blue counter like removal spell options you have. Yeah, not a lot of great ones. Yeah, it seems like the best thing you can do is try to be patient with Brazen Bar. You know, I mean, yeah. is it Phoenix is not this deck where you play it on turn two and on turn three you flip like it was uh, in, modern. in modern. You know, but if you can just be patient, not just bounce it right when it hits four counters or right when it hits the battlefield. You know, waiting for them to do their next turn and then at end step bounce it. Then they're likely to have to deploy it the next turn, maybe get one counter, and then if they're lucky, flip it that next turn, the turn after that. That's a huge tempo loss, and blue can come back. From that, but yeah. about a yeah. trancing melody. Ooh, Ooh. let's go! Yeah, Rob's a been from the chat there. Oh, okay. I was gonna say Rob's been telling lies, but you redeemed yourself now with that, that huge is, truth bomb. That is big brain. Yeah, yeah. You big know what? Brain. I think this uh, Star City Games chat. I think they're pretty smart. All right, we gotta we gotta give them credit. Okay, so I'm gonna be going first. Good questions, everyone. Keep them coming in. Yeah, I mean, I think this hand is fine. It's not, uh, you know, it's not busted or anything, but it's a keeper. Same. It's a little slow for the draw, but we'll see. Go. If you have Fatal Push on turn one again, without taking ever, ever taking damage, I'm going to be so mad. Fatal Push. I'm so mad. (laughs) Ross gets elves. Corey gets Fatal Push. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Okay. Carry at it. Go. And carry at it again. And carry at it. God dang kids skateboarding no, on the sidewalks. <laughs> All right. How do you feel about scavenging ooze? I feel like I'm going to respond to scavenging ooze okay. with a skull crack. Okay. 17. This is not going well. Your turn. Okay, we drew a third land. That's good. <laughs> what did you draw that turn, buddy? I have no idea. I will play an Atrosphere Harvester. Harvester. Okay. You Ooh, get no energy. Pause. Oh, man. Just just a banner day for intro. Yeah, let's just here. let's choose Justin Parnell ter- tokens, I guess. Jeez. All right. Let's eat your uh, mage here. Go to 18. Yep. We'll sack this land. All right, we have to get a mountain here in case we draw. Good old Glory Beezy. Thank you, Robert. All right. Get out of here, Justin. <laughs> hey, be nice. 
Jacob's turn. <laughs> All right. Well, now what to do, what to do. I think we should just slam a Siege Rhino. You a fan? No. I'll go to 21. You go to 17. I'll attack for... F oh, I don't have a creature. Okay. I will attack for three. I am at 14. Okay, your turn. What you know about Siege Rhino? Skull crack you. I already gained all the life, bud. I am aware. Okay. This is your stage, bud. This is your stage. And I will oh. light it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> light up this stage. <laughs> wild slash, wild slash. Those nice. were not good. Hey, one more and you got Rhino taken care of. Those were not good. Not bad, bud. Not you bad. You can go. All right. It's not looking good for your hero. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I should exert to just flex on you a little bit here. <laughs> I am at three. <laughs> Your turn. Oh, I should probably play land. <laughs> Why can't I draw lands? Is there an 18 point burn spell? I need yeah. lands. <laughs> or not lands. I meant creatures. I need more creatures. Wow. You don't even know what you mean. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's like you're in a glass case of emotions. Have you been hanging out with Ron Burgundy too much? I can kill one of Corey's creatures, but I'm dead to all three of them. <laughs> this is the one you really needed to kill. I couldn't have cast either one of these. <laughs> if... Yeah, that was a beating. That was a beating. I have to admit, my draw was nice, you know. Turn one, fatal punch, turn two, carry added, and then just into anything is just so hard for that deck to beat. Just a backup is here, too. I really needed one of these shocks actually on turn four after this ooze so I could go shock light up the stage, skewer the ooze. Yeah. Um, maybe I was supposed to go skull crack, skewer the ooze instead of light up the staging and do that next yeah. turn. But either way, it felt like I, I mean, I just drew one creature and you killed it. And then I was just a bad burn deck against Siege Rhino. Well, I got good news for you. You haven't lost yet because you know what? We got plenty of time. Let's make this a three out of five. These are fast games. Let's, let's do it. Uh, let's do it. So I'm up two one. We'll get uh, we'll get a couple more games going, and you should be favored to win game four. I would imagine. Yeah. Being on the play, I think this seems like a play dependent game. If you have to, if you get the luxury of playing creatures and then being able to hold up Skullcrack for the turn where I very much want to gain life with a siege runner or whatever that's the kind of tempo swing you need but if you're forced to like leave up skull crack without getting a threat down it's like it doesn't even really matter that you have a six point life swing or whatever you know but i think uh sylvan carry added sort of flips the play draw even if you're on the yeah. draw if you have a carry added i think i'm going to be a little behind yeah because you also get to block my stuff and it like it, it stems the bleeding and accelerates you to into your big plays yeah so it makes me hold up mana earlier if i want to skull crack the rhino maybe not be as yeah. aggressive and stop the one drop so this very well could just be a bad matchup for you i mean yeah. honestly siege rhino was insanely good at dealing with creatures it was it was just so hard to come back from yeah i, um, I sort of wanted to see that dynamic like your mana is a little painful and yeah. maybe not that great uh, with four colors, but you have good cards. Yeah. It's like good cards, but your mana's a little weak, so let's see how this goes. Yeah. And so far, your mana's been fine, uh, so maybe I I underestimated uh, how good the mana base was yeah. for the matchup. No, I think Caleb did a good job. I think this is a, a sweet deck. Um, you know, if it struggles against, you know, something like uh, scales it would probably beat uh in soul artifact seems like it, it could be a really tough matchup you yeah, know you put a dark steel citadel <laughs> on uh with with some scissors that seems pretty tough to uh come back from P but push thoughts is good in those matchups though. yeah that's true that's true um might struggle with like mono green ramp yeah so you, you all you have you have a bunch of haste creatures and thoughts so even there that seems cool yeah um this is not a great hand but it's Gain some card advantage, which is nice. So I'm actually going to keep it and try it. Well, we definitely need... We have a huge hole in our hand here, but it's actually a keep because of this card. Um, so we're going to try it. We're going to need some help here. Oh, well, never mind. All right. So we're still... Do we still want to do this? Maybe not. Yeah, we're still going to do this. We're going to once upon a time because there's a certain uh, uh, kind of land that would be nice to lead on here. Um... Let's see. I think I just need any land here. Probably not Mana Confluence. I really do. There you go. I, I would prefer to never draw that card. Um, so either Big Threat or a land to make sure our mana base is good. And I 
think the answer should be land. All right, and we will pass it to you. Perfect. Fatal push this, dingus. <laughs> Bomac courier to you. Take it. You're a 19. I think you probably should have played that on turn one. Maybe. <laughs> then we'll cast light up the stage. Okay, okay. Two lands. Let's go. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. You can go. <laughs> Ooh. So, that was a great draw. Now I have options. I could try to essentially... Make your plays a little cheaper, but if you just have a third land, you can go Lightning Strike Skewer anyways. And yeah, this blocks perfectly, so this adds actually there's no decision here. I'm regretting what I chose on Once Upon a Time now, but uh, we're still doing all right. Tech. Block. Am I taking six? Six, yeah. <laughs> 13. To the dome. You're, you're up. <laughs> to the dome, eh? Okay, well, I want to keep that bow mat in check. You're starting to get to the range where I should start thinking about killing it. Maybe not quite yet. Um, so we're just going to go stomping ground tapped. And yeah, we're not messing around. Let's just get that out of there. That's how you win is with card advantage here. I think one by one I can uh, deal with your threats pretty effectively. Okay. That is your real name. Okay. You think that is my name? Is okay. Wow. <laughs> Abbot of Carol Keep. Okay. <laughs> Just no justice. Why do you do this to me, Deck? I see justice. Why do you do this to me? So you're not a mono red fan? Bomat Courier. <laughs> hmm. Should I block? Yeah, I think. I think I'll I think I'm gonna block. Go. <laughs> now now I actually have a decent question here. I think this is gonna be quite the strong play. Abbott is really annoying, but Bomat is just so, so very good. Um Stop drawing fatal push. I don't okay, you got it. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what I want to abrupt K here because Abbott is something that can hit for a lot of damage, and Bomat is likely to not really get that many more cards. We're going to abrupt decay that. Play it safe. Never drawn a card up on that career in my entire life. <laughs> it's never happened. Exert. <laughs> Did he have the glory bringer in his hand? Uh, I, don't, I wasn't paying attention to that, to be honest. Chat. Did he have the glory bringer in his hand? You know, chat can't respond to you, like, right right now, right? I can hear them. <laughs> I Do you want me to answer it for you? Because no, no, I did not. It was you're a liar. It was right there. You're a filthy liar. <laughs> I'm at 16. Yeah, you are. Perfect. It's a good <laughs> effing chat moment. <laughs> Take seven. <laughs> you're Taste not going to try to kill Glory nope. Bringer? You're at six. I'm just going to try to top deck bird spells and kill you. Okay. Go I'm going to keep this in my hand now so you know I'm not top decking it when I play it this turn, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm going to gain one life. I'm going to gain two life. Going to gain three life? Do you have another creature? Yeah, I've got a three. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll settle for now. This is still tapped, but I'll pass it to you. Okay, you're at eight. Yeah, we got to leave up removal just in case you top deck something. Perfect. <laughs> okay. All right, three drop. Let's go. <laughs> right on time. <laughs> Skull crack you. I will respond. Eat your creature. Where did I? Yeah. Uh, so you go up so to nine I... and then down to six? Yep. You're up. <laughs> All right. What are you at? I'm at 16. Okay. I'm going to go with once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> Gain three. Thirteen go to, to nine. nine. Exert. <laughs> Caleb would be proud. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> oh, you're not dead yet. You're at four. This is anybody's game. Oh, yeah. You're, uh, you're the one at nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is anybody's game at this point. Your turn. Ooh, we're really sweating this last draw. I drew a burn spell. You're dead. <sighs> Seven. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
That was kind of a beating. Yes. This deck is sweet. A large beating. This um, deck is sweet. Who would have guessed? Siege Rhino with Glory Bringer and every single effective one to two mana removal spell would be good uh, against him on a red deck. I actually did not think this matchup was going to go this way on a, on a real mode, especially with you going first in the match. I did not expect to win this just because I, I just, you know, I, I figured my draws have to really line up well, which I'm pretty sure I had to turn to Sylvan carry added all four three, games. Three, uh, three out of four. Yeah. Three out of four. And the other one was just removal who's, into removal. Who's count? Well, the yeah. other one is the one I won. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. Coincidence. Yeah. That's when I just had fatal push, fatal push, glory bringer, glory bringer. And yeah. the deck's going to have awkward draws like that. So it makes sense, you know, that maybe we just draw the, drew the high side on that. Um, but yeah, it looked pretty good. Yeah. Mana base worked well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, carry added certainly played a part in that. And fabled passage. I think uh, just fabled, yeah. passage, fabled is passage is awesome. a really, really powerful card. Very good card uh, in this deck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just good card in general. I think people yeah. are, they overlook it in their three color mana bases. They're playing yeah. just a ton of dual lands. Just get some fatal passages in your deck. Exactly. Unless you're really aggressive. You know, if you're playing a reactive deck and you're trying to get to four and five mana, fatal passages are really good. Yeah. It, you know what? For me, I, I don't know if there's like any real bearing to this, but I think whenever I'm playing a really hyper aggressive deck where I, I just want to curve, you know, yeah. where I want to curve out, I, I usually want to play like two fabled passage because they are bad to draw whenever you really want to play that three drop, I mean, you know? I, I want to play zero if I'm that aggressive. All right, do you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Th I mean, maybe max two is kind of yeah. the thing, you know? Two, two if you need them. Yeah. Because you, know? you yeah. even see like in, in food decks, you know, I mean, like those are decks that really want to curve out. Yeah. So I, and, and there's not a lot being played in those, I don't think, you know, but yeah. Yeah. But in this deck, they are excellent. Absolutely. Um, mono red deck, you know, th this one is a little bit, this, it felt a little bit more burn heavy when I was playing with it. You know, we have the eight prowess creatures and Bomat Courier. Yeah. Uh, but not a lot of other, uh, just those 12 one drops. And then, you know, the Eidolons came out. I've got like one Ass Zealot um, and uh, like some of the sideboard cards. So not a ton of creatures. Yeah. So it really felt like I was trying to be a burn deck and that's even worse against Siege right now. Yeah. Um, I just I, I think you really needed to have more cards to bring in because I just think shock is super bad, yeah. you know, and you had to leave in it, you know, so maybe like chain whirler coming in for those cards would have been reasonable. But maybe. then making your deck clunky is also really bad against like Glorybringer, yeah. you know, what, so what I was really missing is a card like roast that could kill a siege rhino. So yeah, I can get in after it. And then that's what then, then you don't have the pressure coming back. Yeah. You know, like every time you played a big creature, I felt like, well, if I use two burn spells on this, there's just no way I'm winning the game. I'm too low on resources at that point. Yeah. But I can't race it because those cards are so effective at racing. And you would follow it up with some other big threat. But if I had like a roast or some other spell in that vein, yeah. uh, you know, even like Reckless Rage is good against Glorybringer and good with your it's not good with all your creatures. So that one's probably not tenable, but like yeah. some something in that vein, roast, lightning, lightning axe be think hard Fry's to manage. Be playable? Yeah, like they're running volleys on my sideboard. Probably yeah. could be fries. Could no, be re, two no, mana is a lot different than one, you know. Yeah, but, but being able to hit the, um, you know, I, I'd only hit Siege Rhino though. Like, it, it yeah, but honestly, Siege Rhino is just not a part of the metagame at this point, as far as I'm seeing. Like, yeah. it, it, it's and everything is new, you know. So it is all pretty short. But probably helps you hit Oko and fairies and stuff like that. Fry doesn't kill Oko though. That's a huge yeah, problem. You can deal one to it. <laughs> okay, that's your plan. It, it deals with Elko because it gets close. That's that's usually You're how it works in the world deck. of Elko. You can attack it for one. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Well, we uh, Rob, do you got a question for us? Maybe we'll take one question before we uh, yeah. get ready for round two. I've got two here that are kind of okay. Cool. We'll take them both. Uh, first, Flash Lager wants to know what do you think is the overall top? What's your number one deck in the format post bannings? Well, it might be uh, what the mad scientist over here created with blue, red, and soul, and then just gave out to the world. Like, ah, you all should check out his article if you want to play a good deck, because I started playing it yesterday, and I think the deck is insane. I very much wish he didn't give away it so we could, you know, win the invitational. But you know what? I don't control the words Ross no, right, so I think that would be my, pu yeah. my pick. I've, I've 5-0'd three leagues in a row now. You 5 0 your first league. In my only but, league. Yeah, I was making mistakes. Yeah. Brian, Brian Koval tweeted that he picked yeah. the deck up and went 5 0 in his first league. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. deck is apparently quite good. So is it in Seoul? We were both also impressed by the, the Golgari Hardened Skills deck yeah. that we played on Tuesday, the winning list from uh, the NRGCT. So that's old yeah. metagame, but it still looked really powerful. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, the adding the one drops and and like experiment one and pelt collector and not playing uh, steel overseer. I yeah. Think are both very smart decisions. So that deck looked impressive. Yeah. And me and Brandon uh, DeCanio have been like trying to make changes to that deck to make it a little bit better against just like you know your opponent going spot removal, spot removal. Like I mean, I I don't think that deck in a million years could beat this. You know, it's just very effective, cheap removal. And then Glorybringer is always what put that uh, beautiful snake that I love yeah. so much, you the Wine Constrictor. You can even deal with hardened skills itself with Abrupt Decay. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, it depends. You know, I, I I think I think that deck has one huge hole, the the Scales deck, and that's just heavy removal. And you know, some decks are gonna sideboard into that. Gruel decks are gonna have you know ha have roast, have stuff like that. Um, so right now, my pick is probably in Soul Artifact, but I have a Mythic Championship tomorrow which is weird to say and then after that i'm going to be really uh testing pioneer and getting that going so well we got a lot of room to figure out yeah uh and then as a kind of a subset of that bo dub wanted to know what do you feel the top aggro decks in the format is it just mono red is it like a tarka red is it the, the insole deck to some degree i mean i don't know if you can consider the skills deck yeah yeah i i mean i just feel like these are kind of like a death shadowy feel to them, right? Like they they kill with big creatures and stuff, but it feels like, you know, more of kind of a combo to get these creatures large. Like, you know, it's not just an aggro deck because it is relying on a scales effect. And then blue red is relying on, uh, you know, yeah. other they're, cards. They're just synergy it. laden aggressive decks to yeah. me. Yeah. I still yeah. think strategically they're they're both aggressive decks. So yeah. I, I like both of those. I think the mono red decks are fine. They're not great. I haven't been I'm super really, impressed by I'm them. I'm not impressed by them at all, to be honest. Uh, um, and then what else we got? Like I think it, company decks. Oh, Clyde Clyde's deck. The mono black vampire devotion deck still looks good. I'm I'm less high on that after I've been okay, after played, the metagame played. has been starting to adjust. I think all the decks that are really coming out are starting to just be more tuned and they can just deal with a very one track deck. You know, that that's all it is but to me. That deck it, isn't super one track. You can get aggressive, you can still got Soren Champion to grind card advantage. Yeah. Uh and then like if they're you know, if they're not killing killing your stuff. Then you know your gray merchants go way over the top of them. Yeah, but that's I, another deck like Harden Scales, where if you just have a deck that goes removal spell, removal spell, you know, pressure or whatever, it's so hard to win. Um, and once again, Glorybringer is that's another card that just smashes that deck as well. So I'm starting to just see a trend that Glorybringer is just very good in this kind of metagame. Like it's good against these company decks because it goes over spell qualers. Um, yeah, oh. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how many people are going to be playing Glorybringer in the coming you know weeks, so yeah. I still like those decks, but yeah. yeah. Is is it scale, or is it its old scales? The mono black deck I like, you're less high on. Yeah. But it, is it in Golgari, the two decks that we're, we're pretty high on? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Let's hope we don't have that much influence and people don't go read your article because... Then they won't play that deck, and we can play it, so... Yeah, everybody's we're off complaining camera, right? to me about <laughs> telling everybody about the is it deck... Yeah. Whatever. I'll yeah. be fine. Still going to win some matches. Deck's still great. I'm sure we'll improve the still list somewhat. The PC, right? I'm not yeah. worried about you. I wanted your tech to not <laughs> tell the public. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just All right. All the best stuff for Corey. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. So that is going to be it for round one. We are going to get ready for round two. What do we got on your end? Uh, so you're playing the Azorius control deck. Yes, and I'm, I'm playing, playing blue white control. I've added a color to my to my red deck. I'm playing yes. rule aggro. Yeah, we are kind of playing the role of you being the aggro guy today, and I'm trying yeah. to uh, trying to contain you. This We're is another deck that could could be pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Haven't and tried it out yet. Blue white control is something that we touched on a little bit last, but you know we we didn't have a concrete list. I, I don't think we approached it in the right way. I do think this uh, list of blue white is a lot better. So let's uh, let's revisit it. See if we can. Get a little bit better result with it. And we'll be right back with round two here in five minutes. Stay tuned.